Is a plant-based diet for you? Are you wondering if you can have food that tastes good and is healthy for you at the same time? Well, stay tuned to meet two folks who can take you on the journey to health and soothe your taste buds at the same time. My name is Yvonne Shelton, and you're watching Urban Report. Hello and welcome to Urban Report. My guests today are Heidi Tompkins and Ivan Raj from Heidi's Health Kitchen. Ooh, we have a good <laughs> program for you today. Welcome Heidi and Ivan. Thank, Thank you. you for and, having us. Oh, you're welcome. I, I wish I could shake hands, but this is the, <laughs> the time of COVID, so I'll just say I'm hugging. You yes. Right <laughs> Hugs. And you guys don't social distance because you work together. together yeah. We're around each other all the time. <laughs> right, right, right. So I just want to let the audience know we're not disregarding social distancing. We just, you know, we, they don't social distance anyway. So <laughs> we do. We're, we're yes. our, our distance apart. So tell us about Heidi's Health Kitchen. What is it? Sure. So Heidi's Health Kitchen is a ministry and a business. Okay. The business supports the ministry. We give, our ministry gives cooking classes, health lectures, Bible studies, online programs, large public programs uh, to educate people in the laws of health and the gospel. And our business supports our ministry and our business in our business, we manufacture decadent care products mm. and we cater and we operate a pop-up restaurant to support our Bible work and our ministry. Now, oh, that sounds amazing. For those who don't know what a pop-up restaurant is, what is that? Sure, so basically we look for for a venue or a cafe or a coffee house or something that's operating during the day, closed in the evening. So when they close, we can rent the space from them and we open up as Heidi's Health Kitchen. Oh, nice. So you're using an existing facility. Correct that already has a clientele yes. that can kind of funnel into yes. your business yes. and you can teach them yes. plant-based yes. living. And then of course, it's a it's a win-win for the venue because we're bringing in our clientele and they're seeing maybe this place that they've maybe never come to before. Nice, nice. So what kinds of foods do you have there? Well. Okay, wait, wait, do I need a napkin? Cause I might start <laughs> salivating. <laughs> <laughs> so primarily, uh, I provide the American and Italian type dishes, mm. and of course, Ivan's from <laughs> South India, so we offer South Indian food Isn't as it? well. Yeah. yeah, yummy. Now, how did you get involved with with Heidi's Health Kitchen and with Heidi? How did oh, you guys okay. <laughs> so actually, uh, Heidi and I met at a church in Manhattan, and uh, we were both Bible workers. And uh, I actually brought her the proposal yes. after I prayed and asked God as to how I can start a self-sustaining business that supports the Bible work. Nice. So God gave, God answered the prayer and he gave me the wisdom to put together a proposal in 2014. And then I showed the proposal, I emailed the proposal to Heidi and I said, this is what we're gonna do. Even the name also, God gave it to me, as Heidi's Health Kitchen after I fasted and I prayed. How beautiful. You know what I love about this, you guys, is it's both ministry and it's a business. So you're making your living mm -hmm. through ministry, yes. Yes. which is wonderful. You're, you're Bible instructors, so yeah. you know the word, and that word is kind of I want to say implanted into the food. Yes, but the, it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the, the principles are you're, you're living out the principle. Yes. So I think that is so beautiful. And every recipe cool. is from God and we thank him for it. Yes. And yeah. we ask him, you know, to put his finger in there and stir it and make it just right for every palate <laughs> and all that. <laughs> what are some of the challenges that you find you have with this particular kind of ministry? I would say probably one of our challenges is that we just, we do so many things and so our schedule for example, like it's very, you know, it's very meticulous. Like we've got certain hours that we do our manufacturing mm. weekly, 
certain hours that you know we're in the kitchen and so forth and then the other hours where we can schedule you know bible work or counseling sessions for our bible students uh, mentoring we Ivan also offers business mentoring to his Bible students as well and, and our Bible students. And so we just are doing so many things and then, you know, speaking engagements and, and speaking projects and we're just doing so much. I would say, for, I think that our challenge is probably managing our time, yeah. which we just, we've got a very regimented schedule to be able to handle it all. Wow. Yeah, so God gave us a wisdom to not time manage, but priority management. What is urgent and important, take care of that right away. Mm. So we kind of have like a chart um, where we, we write down what is urgent, the most urgent, and what is the most important. What is the least urgent and least important. And then uh, we go by that. Wow. That's so beautiful. anything that is, which is highly urgent and top priority, important, that will be taken care of first, and the least important and least priority uh, urgency. Right. Within right. our schedule of all of our other things. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so how many people work with you? Is it volunteer work? Is it... Uh, our staff are part-time. They're paid staff part-time. And so uh, we have a paid staff that works for us at our pop-up restaurant. Uh, Helen is our pop-up restaurant manager. She's been such a blessing. God brought us Helen, and she's had years and years of restaurant and catering experience. She's been such a blessing to us. Uh, and then we've got some part-time staff as well that help with the pop-up restaurant. At our pop-up restaurant, I'm the host and a server, and then Hannah and Addie and grace our servers as well. So our part-time staff is uh, four to six people six depending people. on the event. Wow. So look at how God has brought you what you needed. Yes. Like at every exactly. juncture, yeah. he's brought you the people that you need. He brings you the, the facilities yep. that you need. And, and you're doing an incredible work. From Praise what God. I hear, you guys are doing great work. And I'm, I'm just so thankful for what you're doing. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, now, you incorporate Indian food yeah. into the cuisine? Yeah, we give two options for people to choose from, uh -huh. either the Western or Indian. Ah. So people select on our website and they prepay and they come and dine. And it's all plant-based? All yes. plant-based and gluten-free. Oh, wow. Yeah. All whole food plant-based, gluten-free. We also offer oil-free dishes for those that are more health conscious. Okay. And we operate our pop-up restaurant as a three-course prefix for a set price. They choose their entree, appetizer, and dessert out of some choices. Indian is one of them. And... You know, I know that the viewers are now saying, okay, so where is it? Can I go? <laughs> <laughs> so it's so currently... It? We actually started our pop-up restaurant in Manhattan four years ago, yeah. and then um, the last three years we've been in Long Island, in Babylon, ah. New York, in Babylon Village. It's a quaint little place <laughs> and um, really nice if anyone's visiting. <laughs> now tell us about your decadence chocolate. Sure. Well, is it decadence carob? Decadent carob. 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 Yeah. Now, by the way, I just want to mention our pop-up restaurant. We're only open once a month. It's the third Sunday of the month. Oh, okay. So for all of our New York viewers, yes. <laughs> it's the third Sunday of the month, and it's the pop-up restaurant. Yep, they go right onto our website, they book their ticket, and choose their menu in advance. Okay, and we're going to put your website up sure. as well, yeah. so that people will know exactly how to reach you. And at our pop-up, and at our other events, our products are available as well. So like our Karubis, our decadent carob truffles, mm. or our Carabella, our decadent carob spread, Fig Espresso is another one of our signature products. Wow. It's a coffee replacement. Okay. Did you bring samples? We didn't bring <laughs> that one, but we brought the other products. <laughs> That's great. That's good. We'll talk after the program. <laughs> That's wonderful. So what you're finding, I would imagine, is that people are gravitating to what you're doing yeah. because you're offering them Good taste yeah. and health. Yes. Yes. How? What kinds of people are you servicing in? At the Usually, restaurant? it's uh, the upper middle class and above. Yeah. Tell us about some of the people that you. Yeah, it is. It is because uh, we are located, or the the pop up restaurant location is in a place where is mostly upper middle class and upper class clientele. Um, so therefore. Our catering is also geared towards them. Our services are geared towards such people. Mm -hmm. The affluent and the educated. 
Mm. A lot of, of course, in New York, a lot of Jewish families. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, a lot, a lot of people who are just interested in health, looking to better their health, and you know, looking for the best way to do it. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, you you have some situations there with people that that you've helped with their health. Tell us about. That. Yes. Oh, so many. Uh, wow. So, well, now we also, um, prior to this time that we're living in now, we also gave cooking demonstrations and hands-on cooking classes. We have many, many people who have come through our free cooking demonstrations in Midtown Manhattan, yeah. ah. and then they've joined our paid hands-on cooking classes where we cook an entire five-course meal together so that they can actually get the hands-on instruction. We have many testimonies from that, people that thought, okay, I I can actually do this. I can switch my diet, I can change my lifestyle, and we've shown them how in many, many testimonies, how they now know that they can live healthier and, and have a better lifestyle, and from our pop-up restaurant as well, because, you know, we, we serve many of the things that we've demonstrated here on cooking shows at 3ABN. And so, for example, when we serve as an appetizer, our uh, herb stuffed avocados, mm. it, people ask, wow, you know, can, do you give recipes? Like, can I get the recipe for this? Right. And I tell them, sure, you can just go to 3ABN, go to yeah. YouTube and search 3ABN, and you can find our cooking programs right there. And of course, we're hoping that while they're there, they'll watch other programs. Exactly, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's yeah. great, that's what we want. Yes. That's great. <laughs> so they come in and, and they have a cooking class. Walk me kind of through, walk us through the, the process. So they find out about you, from the website or from watching? Online or, or online. sure, Eventbrite or something. They come, what happens? To a cooking class? Yeah, so to or to the class. restaurant and then you funnel them into. Sure, sure, so our cooking classes, uh, we, we demonstrate four to five different dishes. One of, our, one of the elders of our church is a, a naturopath in, in original medicine and he does short health talks in between each cooking demo. And you know, it's all to you know, get people to be able to consider their health and see that they can make the transition and understand the benefits that they could receive. And so uh, people get to taste everything. They get to take home the recipes. When they come to our pop-up, you know, they're seated, they're greeted with a smile. At our pop-up, we have testimonies of people who's, who've been able to improve their health. We also have testimonies about the atmosphere, very peaceful. Mm. We're playing instrumental Christian hymns. We've got health and uh, physical, mental, and emotional health tracts, little pamphlets on the table. They can read, they can take with them. And, you know, this is the way we see it, Yvonne. These people are, we know that the people in the world are living in darkness. And we pray from the moment someone books their ticket, and even if there's an empty seat up until the time that seat is filled, we're praying. I, I can tell you our pop-up ministry is probably more of a prayer ministry than a food ministry mm. because we pray for every single person. We ask God to prepare their hearts before they arrive. We ask that that one hour, hour and 15 minutes that they're dining with us, that they will be brought out of darkness into God's marvelous light and they would crave it from thenceforward. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. We pray for all their sins to be forgiven and that God would cover them with his blood and his righteousness and, and lead their too. feet to the city <laughs> of God. Oh, that's so beautiful. Because without prayer, that you have to have prayer. Because this isn't just a business. We're not that's doing right. our pop-up restaurant for a business. If we were, we'd be open every day of the week and so forth. But this is, our, this is really a part of our ministry. Yes, that's, a, that's great. So are you able to... Um, you have pamphlets there. Are you able yes. to include spiritual yeah. information? They're mostly for them? glow tracks, so they've mm -hmm. got something. They've got you know something Good. in them that you know that leads them that way. The health ones, even the water tract. You know, at the end, there's a Bible verse. You know, at the yes. end, or a scripture reference. You know, so um, there are physical health, mental or emotional health related tracts, and then from from people coming to our pop-up restaurant, we tell them about our other events. We tell them about our cooking demonstrations. We also offer in-home food programs, in-home cooking, in-home juicing, and we've gotten those clients from our pop-up as well. So you'll go to someone's home? Yes. 
Oh, wow. And teach them. That's great because you're in their environment. You can look yes. and see what they have yes. there. You can say, oh, yes. you know what a better. To be able to pray in their home, yes. even if they don't know that we're doing it, just to invite God's presence there. Yes. To be there even when we leave. Yeah, it's yes. a real blessing. I would think that with that kind of a, a place, you would also attract people who are like Buddhists and all, all Hindi backgrounds. And Absolutely. Yeah. We yeah. Do. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the vegan. Yeah. The whole thing, plant based. Yep. Absolutely. Thing. So I would think that that would yep. be. And, and one of the things you guys have been doing is you have been um, doing uh, research and investigation of yoga and its effects. And I want to talk a bit about that. Sure. Um, because as you know, I don't have to tell you, yoga is infiltrating the churches, schools, society. And Ivan, you being Indian and having yeah. come from India, you know firsthand about Hinduism and all that. So talk to us a bit, if you would, mm -hmm. about that about yoga i'd like to know and i know a lot of our viewers would like to know about yoga yeah. and so what that's about yes your yoga is from my country india and uh, it is rooted in hinduism the word yoga means to yoke to unite to marry to combine and um, so yoga is actually a ritual a hindu ritual it is a physical expression of worship if you do just stretching even if you don't chant, and even if you just do a yoga posture or a stretching, you are still following Hinduism. Now, this, Ivan, what you just said is critical because I have heard, you know, I, I, my background is that new age thing. And yeah. sure. um, I was practicing alternative medicine, but new age modalities and stuff. And one of the arguments for yoga from people is it's just exercise. It's different. It's just stretching. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with stretching. There's nothing so wrong with stretching. Tell us why is that, why is it not just exercise? Yeah, so stretching is different from yoga. Everybody, we all have to stretch for mm -hmm. blood circulation. It's mm -hmm. very good for health. You have to stretch. However, yoga uh, the postures and the stretching in yoga is designed as a form of worship. Worship to whom? Self. Ah. So each pose, each different yoga pose actually invokes a Hindu god so that the lie that Satan told, you can be like gods. Mm. So when God gave this uh, program, you know, like in into my mind, when he put it into my mind, um, it was purely through God's grace I was able to decipher uh, the techniques about the postures in yoga. I mean, the techniques about yoga, the postures and the breathing techniques. And so, so much involved in, in yoga is just a Hindu ritual. It's a Hindu lifestyle. Mm. So if as a Christian I practice yoga, then I'm saying that Jesus is not adequate for me because as a Christian, he is the author and finisher of my faith. And yoga has nothing to do with Christ. Has mm. an entirely different author. Mm. So when, when a Christian says, I do yoga and I'm a Christian and it's not hurting me, I still go to church. I still read my Bible. I mean, so my question how is to, it hurting yeah, me? Yeah, my question is, if I go to a mosque, if I enter a mosque, right? Mm -hmm. And if I do this, and they say, I'm still worshiping Allah, even though I'm a Muslim, but my With hand the gestures... The cross. Yeah, would it be acceptable? No. It's not acceptable. So how is it then acceptable when you practice a Hindu teaching, mm -hmm. a Hindu philosophy. It's actually, yoga is part of uh, one of the six schools of Hindu philosophy. There's a philosophy called Samkhya, S-A-M-K-Y-A, Samkhya philosophy, uh, one of the six schools in Hinduism. And it means numbers. 
it also means knowledge. Hmm. It is a theory and the practical part of Samkhya, the practical arm of Samkhya philosophy is yoga. And it is atheistic in nature. Wow. Yeah, Hinduism is actually atheistic and theistic. So there are two schools huh. combined in Hinduism. Now that's interesting because I, I thought that Hinduism was just theistic in that there's so right. many millions of gods. In yeah, it. 33 million gods, including Donald Trump. He's a god. Donald Trump? Yeah, people worship Trump in Hinduism. If you want to go to YouTube and just type worshipping Donald Trump, you will watch videos of people worshipping Trump as God. I'm just... Oh uh, my! Because it's not a sin in Hinduism, because right. you are God, I am God, everybody is God. So the 33 million gods are also people? Yes. yes, they were once upon a time who lived and they died and... And some of them are alive. Right. They have godmen, you know, wow. that are still alive. So when one practices yoga, I just want to make sure that sure. our viewers get this yep. because this is critical. You're not just stretching. If you take a yoga class, mm -hmm. you are actually inviting yeah. the spirits yeah. that are connected to mm -hmm. that, to yes. Hinduism. Yes, yes. And entering their territory. Yeah, yes, going on their yes. ground. Yeah. And bring it in into your home yes. if yeah. you're watching. So what about Christian yoga? There's nothing... Okay, people can brand it as Christian yoga, but it doesn't exist uh, because it's yoga is Hinduism. You can never separate it from Hinduism. It is Hinduism. That would be like saying I'm a Christian Hindu. Wow. They're two different things. Right. Which are you? And right. It's one or the other. Right. Do you have, are, you, are you monotheistic or polytheistic? Right. Yeah. Right. And also right. in India, a lot of gurus say that in the past, the Brits came and stole our gold. Now, the Westerners have stolen our yoga and they've Krishnaized it. Mm. You have your own God. Why you want to follow our teachings and then Christianize it and make it yours? It's an insult to Jesus Christ. Mm. Oh, now that is, that's a powerful statement. It's an insult yes. to Jesus mm -hmm. when Christians practice yoga. Yeah. Yeah, because that's saying he's not enough. He's not enough. He's not adequate. Yeah, he's not. Yeah. Wow. So, so besides the stretching with yoga, mm -hmm. there's breathing, yes. there's meditation. Yes, there's breathing, there's meditation, there's diet. It's called a sattvic diet, which is a vegetarian diet, not vegan, not plant-based. It's a vegetarian diet. In fact, Buddha was not a vegan. Uh, Buddhism is also from my country, India. Mm and uh, Buddha consumed dairy products. So I'm always surprised to see Buddhist, uh, sorry, uh, Buddha statues in a vegan or plant-based restaurants, mm -hmm. whereas uh, Buddha was not a vegan or plant-based. That's so interesting, because I've always thought that Buddha was a vegan, mm. that, you know, vegetarian, vegan, or yeah. whatever. And so you're saying that that wasn't the case no, at all. No, not at all. In wow. Buddhist writings, it is mentioned that he consumed dairy and he actually died of food poisoning. Mm. A group of uh, Buddhists say he died of uh, food poisoning because of consuming mushrooms. Other groups say he consumed, he ate pork. Mm. So Buddha has nothing to do with veganism or plant-based diet. Wow. So it's interesting to me how a lot of the Eastern religions have crept into Christianity yeah. and it's, it's so dangerous and yet it's presented yes. in the media as therapeutic, mm -hmm. harmless, it's so good for you. Yeah. And yet if you're a Christian, you have to do your research. You yeah. can't just accept things at face value. Yeah. You have to do your research and know that this is not of God. Yeah. A lot of people recently have put YouTube videos that they have left yoga. A lot of them, especially during the lockdown period. Yes. A lot of them because they started experiencing supernatural effects mm -hmm. and they got scared of... Negative supernatural, negative, negative, right? Negative. Effects. Mm -hmm. 
negative, which is scary to them, and they said, oh, wow, this is, this is not good for me, this is not right. Yes, yes. Yeah. So you, you really have gotten deeply into yeah. the study of yeah. this. Yeah. Are you able to share this with people at the restaurant, or is uh, this no. something that you keep separate? It's a separate uh, entity, and I do it separately. When uh, people invite me to present at churches, I do that. Good, and we have an address page for you so that people okay. can do that. Okay. They can contact you and invite you to come to their church mm -hmm. and do, do you do cooking classes? Yes. And yeah. Yep. All of that. Teaching we often go, you know, to a church for a weekend and we can do a weekend of programs, you know, from Friday night through Sabbath, Sabbath evening, and then Sunday do cooking programs and health programs. Oh, that's awesome. So let's put that page up on the screen, Heidi's Health Kitchen, P.O. Box 232, Babylon, New York, 11702. So you can see that and their website and an email address if you want to email them. Ivan or Heidi, they can reach yeah. you there. So that's really good because I'm sure that people will have questions yes. about food about now do you ship the yeah we ship, it across. We, do. we ship across oh, the u.s chocolates, the carob carob yeah mm -hmm. carubies and carabella all of our products we ship across the u.s and i have they're great tasted. gifts yes so. i've tasted them <laughs> and they are delish i just have to tell you so thank you for what you're doing so what would you both of you i want you to look into your camera and speak to that person that's battling either with their diet or with yoga or with whatever temptation it is, speak to both of you, speak to your camera and just briefly, like 30 seconds a piece, tell us, tell them what they should do. Well, you know, God doesn't want any of us to be sick. He created us to be in good health and he wants you to be in good health. So if you're struggling with foods or recipes or ways to stretch and exercise, whatever it might be, check out our website. Go to HeidiSelfKitchen.com and contact us and check out the cooking shows that we've done here on 3ABN and the other resources that we have to offer. And we pray that God would keep you in good health. You got about 10 seconds, Ivan. And I pray that uh, you'll do a lot of research uh, before you continue your practice on yoga if you're already into it. And I pray that God will uh, give you the light and all the information you need so you can make a decision. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for what you're doing. You guys are a light in the darkness. God. You are a shining light up on a city on a hill. And so we just thank you so much for what you're doing. And we thank you for joining us. You know, every day we try to bring you programs that will be a blessing. So make sure to join us next time because you know what it just wouldn't be the same without you